When last we left our heroes, Alina the Wizard and Hetfield the Bard had just managed to not be blasted into utter oblivion by a, an adult black dragon and apparently the big bad guy that they don't know yet. All I know is that shit got bad. So I ran them through a really modified version of the Pathfinder Beginner Box Dungeon, and this time I'm going to send them towards the Lost Mines of Fandelver. My name is Patrick Murray, and this is my campaign diary. day's journey away from the dungeon, hoping that they did not see a dragon come above them and roast them with acid, <laughs> they returned to the village. And upon arriving in Sunboro, they discovered that it had pretty much been blasted into oblivion by the dragon. That's right, the dragon came along and burned the hell out of the village. Or dissolved the hell out of the village since it's an acid attack. Fun with black dragons. Naturally, as they gathered information, they discovered, yes, dragon, bad thing, try not to die. But since you were with the idiot that was wanting to go up there and start a fight, you would be best to just leave our town. You could stay here the night since it's growing dark and it's doubtful the dragon is going to swing back during the darkness to blast us into oblivion. Unless he does, in which case we're dead anyway. So the next morning, the party finds that a good half of the village has sort of survived. They've spent the night sitting outside rather than trying taking shelter in a house that is completely sardine can with villagers because most of their village is dead. Along comes a cart driven by a couple dwarves by the name of Bogo and Dogo Ale Slammer. Yes, Bogo as in buy one, get one. That's what I named him. Now, Bogo's a fighter and... Dogo is a cleric, because I figure the party still needs a little bit of a hand in dealing with things because they're simply two non-meat shield types. Bard could be a meat shield, although he doesn't end up being that way. I think our meat shield's actually going to be the frickin' wizard. And after some discussion, they go with them. The party joins them to transport things to the town of Fandolin. After a day and a half, they come upon some dead horses and some bodies, because that's how it happens in the adventure module. They, of course, get ambushed by goblins, because I have a four second level character that threw half a dozen goblins at him. Hetfield, of course, charged right up on the goblins before they could do anything and did the thunder wave. It was awesome. So, the party's ready to push on to Fandlin, so naturally the dwarves want to take care of the bodies, and they suggest tracking on the goblins. The party, of course, spots all the traps on the way to the cave, and manages to get um, Bogo, the fighter, to join them. Of course, in their wisdom, they have him stump along in the lead when they get there, and they get ambushed by the goblins, who again get obliterated rather quickly. So in the party goes to a, an elf, a dwarf, and a human who can't see in the dark. And this dungeon is mostly not lit. So instead of heading up by the river, they decide to take a turn to the right, where it leads to a bunch of wolves chained. This was going to be interesting because I was pretty certain that they were going to have to fight and or kill the wolves and have a bloodbath. But no. One Hetfield broke out his bandolin and... Doo -doo 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 started playing strangely it resembled a Metallica song because that seems to be kind of the theme here of Wolf and Man to be exact. And after a little convincing, the party manages to get to the back of the cave where they climb up a chimney and reach the big boss. As their first encounter, they fight in this cave. Instead of going through all the other goblins, they get to fight the boss. Of course, they send the dwarf up first and he has disadvantage on all his roles, so naturally they spot him and it's on. The party easily drops Clark, his wolf, and the two goblins that are with him. 
And because the adventure is in a noisy cave, nobody else hears this. They find a whole bunch of treasure and some cool stuff, but it's mostly stuff they can't haul out. And there's a bunch of wolves that they have to go back through. So they proceed north from there and into the cave with the pools. Those of you who already know the adventure know this. They manage to take two of those goblins out while the third one takes a run for the bridge to go alert the others. They kill that third goblin as he gets to the fourth goblin who's on the bridge. They're not fast enough though to get that fourth goblin who runs to the area where all the other goblins are and fun ensues. So the party's managed to escape the floods and all the surprises that the goblins have by sneaking up and killing the big bad first. But now their luck has finally run out because they gotta go and deal with the goblin dead. Which, because they said we sent one person in, now has seven goblins instead of the six. Both the uh, wizard and the bard happen to know Thunderwave, and six of the goblins are quickly killed deader than hell. Luckily, the seventh goblin, Yemek, has a human, which he's threatening to kill if the party comes any closer. Alina decides to attack, and the goblin slits the human's throat. Fortunately, we have this little bard who happens to know healing words, so he blurts it out as the goblin goes running. Bogo, the dwarf, and Hetfield go in pursuit. Alina goes and talks to the human. The goblin is trying to get away and get to the boss. Fails to do so because he gets to the boss's chamber and find him, finds him dead. Hetfield manages to corner him, and Hetfield and Bogo manage to corner him there and in the end are able to kill him dead. And that's pretty much all the goblins in the cave, leaving only the wolves. Now here's where the advantage and disadvantage of doing Skype session is. The disadvantage is you don't have plenty of time, and you're sitting and relaxing, and you got before and after time, because I'm on a three hour different schedule. The downside is that we don't get to sit together in a room and chill out and enjoy each other's company. The plus side is that if we need to do some pickup, we can just schedule a time, all get on and talk, which is what we did because at this point I had to leave and go for what turned out to be eight hours of playing um, Castles of the Crusades, where I got very, very powerful. <laughs> By this time this drops, the rest of my party will have found out what I was doing extracurricularly and why I now have Fireball and Lightning Bolt and Fly. <laughs> So the next day, we picked up where Alina got to meet the old man, who was known as Sildar. She spoke with him, found out a little bit about a, one of his friends who is missing, um, specifically Gundren Rockseeker, one of the three brothers who has found the long-lost Wave Echo Cave, uh, yada yada, Lost Mine of Fandelver's main location. So Sildar, of course, asks the party to help him get the supplies that he had. They could have the rest of the treasure, and he'd pay them to get him and the stuff to, fan to Fandolin. So the party, of course, took him up on that. Then they waited for the dwarves to get back with the wagon. Night fell, and they got a good rest. Hetfield decided to spend a little more time with the wolves. After many animal handling checks and some charisma checks and playing his mandolin really well, He's got a wolf with a black stripe that seems to be following him, and two other wolves that are not trying to kill him pretty much instantly. Because he rolled really, really well every time. And plus, it was good role-playing, because he was literally sitting there playing the mandolin as the wolves were around him. He fell asleep, found a wolf laying on his lap, with the head in his lap, and that's his pet. So they proceeded to Fandolin to go to the inn, drop the stuff, and we, of course, did uh, XP and waffles. Although I'm going more on milestones than XP because of all the things that happened and because the first adventure was really, really rough, I figured, let's go ahead and bump them to third level. So, now I have a decision. I could get continued on the Lost Mine of Fandelver, but I got something new. I picked up this book, Tales from the Yawning Portal. It's a pretty cool book. It has all kinds of classic dungeons. In fact, the first adventure in here, The Sunless Citadel, 
is one that I'm actually considering running them through. I'm also considering running them through the Tomb of Horrors. Yeah, for those of you who don't know the Tomb of Horrors, it was designed by Gary Gygax. It was designed specifically to kill players. This is a, it's a TPK dungeon, and it's in this book. So, I'm going to have to run them through all of it. And eventually, I will run somebody through that horrid death trap of death traps. You know, the one where you get to the beginning of the dungeon, and you may not even get in the dungeon before it kills you. So, join us next time, because I don't know where we're going with this. I have not decided, and I'm going to prep it, and I'm going to let the party decide. But I have a wizard who is getting her feeling and may want to start into more of a warrior class as a wizard. And I have a bard who is in possession of a mandolin that has a great deal of power. He hasn't unlocked any of it yet, and he needs a quest to do that on. I haven't decided what that quest is going to be, whether it's going to take him somewhere around Phandalin, or if it's going to take him to the, take them to the Sun of Citadel. I don't know. I'm going to decide that sometime in the next few days before we want to run again. So until next time, try not rolling any ones, because I'm going to punish you for it.